And this particular model, T34-85, 85mm gun, it's got the bigger turret and the bigger gun on um, that was in use later in the Second World War. And it's often picked on as a, a classic example of Russian tank design. Sloped armour, very good reliable engine, wide flat tracks, uh, powerful gun, and everything else didn't really matter. Crew conditions inside are abysmal, but don't forget, Stalin kills more of his own people than Hitler ever does, so you don't complain about things like that if you're in the Russian army. And uh, this particular example is in the markings of Polish forces, post-war Polish forces, and produced in tremendous numbers in the Second World War, and carried on being produced after World War II as well. Held by a V12 diesel, again, it's tactics the same diesel, and it's uprated for turbocharged in the case of the T-72, but basically the same engine. It's been used for years, but you'll notice it uses basic touch and brake steering. There's nothing sophisticated about the tank on the bonnet at all. Skid steers on every opportunity. Also, it's one of those strange tanks that the turret is well formed. Famously, when a T-34 was captured on uh, the Eastern Front by the Germans, it was taken to Berlin and uh, Albert Speer got the German arms manufacturers to have a closer look at it. And after they stopped, stopped wetting, wetting themselves laughing because of the crudity of the uh, welds on the turrets, Speer made them have a closer look and they realised it was a very effective design. And uh, there was at one point where the Germans actually thought they might copy the T-34 and put it in pr production. Um, but being German tank designers, they decided they had to go one better. And that led to the pan 